for our second case, our patient is coming in for a recurrent left inguinal hernia. Admitting diagnosis is the same as primary diagnosis. And Zimbi surgery typically are pretty straightforward. Again, they usually know what the patient's coming in for. Um, Sometimes the pre-op and post-op diagnosis are not the same, but they're generally pretty close. And why I'm talking about pre-op, post-op. Remember, if you're coding a pre-op or an op report, don't code the pre-op diagnosis, code the post-op. Pre-op is what the surgeon thinks is probably going on. Post-op is what the surgeon knows after he or she investigated that whatever during the surgery right so pre-op is just kind of a baseline of why the surgery was even performed post-op is what they found when they did the surgery so pre-op we don't use to code and then the primary procedure laparoscopic repair of recurrent left inguinal hernia again pretty straightforward so consent just skip by that now here's our op report so here's an example pre-op post-op in this case, they're the same. So pre-op, they think the patient had a recurrent left inguinal hernia. Post-op, turns out, the patient had a recurrent left inguinal hernia. So the procedure being performed was this laparoscopic repair of the recurrent left inguinal hernia. So our description, the patient is brought to the OR, placed in the supine position on the operating table, and after adequate general endotracheal anesthesia was instituted, a Foley cath was inserted and he was prepped and draped in the usual fashion for a laparoscopic inguinal hernia. A, a one centimeter incision was made on the inferior umbilical fold transversely in the midline just through the skin. A varus needle was placed through that area and then through the midline fascia and into the peritoneal cavity. CO2 insufflation was begun on low flow we had about one liter to a, one and a half liters of CO2 present. I then increased the flow to a higher flow until we had an intraperitoneal pressure of about 15 millimeters of mercury. The Vares needle was then removed. We had about three to three and a half liters of CO2 present in the peritoneal cavity. The 10 to 11 millimeter endopath ethicon trophar was placed through that opening through the midline fascia and into the peritoneum and into the peritoneal cavity. Okay, so all of that that I just read is just them prepping the patient for surgery, right? They're just getting everything ready, filling the abdomen with the CO2 so that they can see once they get in there. And then we actually start the procedure. Next, it says the patient was placed in the Trendelberg position. The trocar was removed and a zero 10 millimeter laparoscope with camera attachment was placed through the port and into the peritoneal cavity. So this is where we're actually entering the patient, right? The surgeon's putting the scope in. The whole first paragraph is just them prepping the patient for that scope. So now um, examination revealed no specific abnormalities except a small what was probably recurrent direct hernia on the left, no hernia on the right that I could visualize. The two lateral ports were then placed. A one centimeter horizontal skin incision was made about the level of the umbilicus lateral to the rectus muscle in the lower quadrant, left lower quadrant area, and another 10 to 11 millimeter endopath at the contrafar was placed in the peritoneal cavity under direct visualization. A 5.5 millimeter reducer was placed over that to alternatively switch instruments as we needed to go along. The right lower quadrant port, port was placed at the level of the umbilicus lateral to the rectus muscle. A one centimeter horizontal incision was made in the skin and another 10 to 11 millimeter endopath epicontinual car was placed into the peritoneal cavity under direct visualization. When the trocar was removed via the port, a 5.5 millimeter reducer was also placed over that in to accommodate smaller instruments. I then used instruments in the right lower quadrants, the left lower quadrant ports to visualize the left inguinal area, 
As I said, it was a small, probably direct, left inguinal hernia. The area was bulging into that area around the femoral area. It was also somewhat of a bulge, but I believe this was truly a direct hernia that was re recurring. The Metabon scissors, disposable with cartery set at 50, was then used to make a peritoneal incision from the lateral umbilical cord fold medially in a lateral fashion then across the top of the inguinal area, taking care to avoid the epigastric vessels, and then out laterally well beyond the left or the internal inguinal ring area. Prior to doing this, however, the femoral vessels, the epigastric vessels, and the intral alveolar fold here, the spermatic cord and vessels um, were seen all identified as was the internal ring. So we went ahead then and used krill cramps, one in each hand, to begin dissecting the peritoneum off the subcutaneous tissue and other structures in that location in that inguinal area. And that's it. That's the end. Usually, they also say how they close the patient up, take out the instruments, and send the patient to recovery. But this op report does not. They just end right there. So what they basically did through that whole thing that we read was insert the instruments, right, get the patient ready. They examined. They found the hernia. They just reduced it. And then sutured the patient back up, which they did not say. And be cut and dry. Now, as you're reading the, those descriptions, I know at first it probably seems foreign, but all you want to do as a coder is to verify that what the surgeon said he or she did here in the statement, like laparoscopic repair of recurrent, recurrent left and renal hernia, is what is described here. Okay. Also, many times we get more information as we're reading the op report than the physician gave us here. Like, for example, if we're, if we're doing like colon polyps, when we're reading the op report, we can see if they used cold biceps, you know, cautery, forceps, how they remove them, where sometimes in the procedure they might just say polypectomy and not say by what technique. And then as we're reading, we'll, we'll see it's by snare technique, right? Or here, they might have just said repair of inguinal hernia. And then as we're reading, we would have known that it was a laparoscopic repair and it was recurrent. So by reading the description of the procedure, you get those modifying factors, if you will, about the procedure. It doesn't mean you have to understand everything that you're reading, but the more you become familiar with reading op reports, the more you will know, right? Like the CO2 insufflation. You'll learn that that's just so that they can see, right? They fill the patient up with air so that they can see visually what they're looking at as they come in the scope. You'll see that the trocars are part of that process, right? So you just learn these things. It's not, it's not something you can read in a book, probably. It's just experience of reading through op reports. So if you don't understand everything right now, it's okay. The more you read these, the more you will understand the surgical terminology that's used. And again, if you don't know, you can always look up in a medical dictionary or, you know, watch a video on YouTube of how the procedure is done. And that might help you get that visual in your, in your mind. But this one's pretty straightforward. We're just going to code our diagnosis of the recurrent left inguinal hernia. And then our procedure is just repairing that laparoscopically. Okay. So let me stop sharing this and share my document camera. Okay. Switch out my books. So our diagnosis is that inguinal hernia, right? So we're going to go to H to hernia. Remember, you never go to the anatomical site in CM. You go to the what and then to the where. So our what is our hernia. And on page 171, and our where is in penal. Okay. And then 
once we get to inguino, we would come down to recurrent. Which is K40.91. So inguino is my main term. And then my subterm is recurrent. K40.91. So let's flip to K40.91 and verify this code. So page 733, unilateral inguinal hernia without obstruction or gangrene recurrent. So perfect, that's what we want, right? Now let's code the repair. So in your CBT book, go to the back. Remember the index is in the back of CBT. And we're going to go to our term, which is hernia repair. And then we have to say where that's done. So I'm on page 1068. So hernia repair, and we want to go to Indiana, which is on the next page, 1069. So we'll see Indiana right there. And ours was laparoscopic. 